And uh, Mike Ken's no longer top 16 player, but he's still very difficult to beat. Well, he is. And uh, he's always got pride in his performance. This lad can play, though, if he turns it on. This could be a very interesting match between these two. Great pop. As you've already mentioned, David, just the one victory then for Kurt between these two. Always makes a difference when you've got a victory under your belt against a, an opponent. The mindset is different. Saw that early on in the day between Dave Gilbert and, and Ding Junhui. Kurt Mathlin uh, got married a month or so back and indeed his wife, Anita, actually played in the qualifying rounds of this tournament on Thursday. Didn't get through, but that's a first, a married couple playing in the same tournament. Four. They met uh, at a, uh, an amateur tournament, it was the European Amateur Championship, where they first met. There is another married couple in this tournament as well, of course, Ben Wollaston and his wife Tatiana is one of the referees. Ah, trying to force that pink in. Come He's got in. away with that a little bit. Ken Doherty is married to a psychiatrist, which uh, must surely come in handy. I think I missed out on that one. <laughs> well, the red is on. It just depends where this cue ball is going to finish. He's obviously going to be going into another red. It's difficult to see how he can get on a colour here. Calling all pockets there. Slight grimace as he sits down. One. Both these players can mix it when they need to, but I'm not too sure there'll be too much safety in this match. They both like to attack whenever they can, especially this guy at the table. Mm, Ken Dockers, of course, a very solid tactician. 14. He won't be wanting to give this lad too many chances and get some table time to find his rhythm. Twenty-one. Right to say, David. Norway's the only Norway's number one. Well, the only professional on the on the circuit. Twenty-two. Yeah, and uh, he's really making. Strides at the ranking, 62 currently. I think he's going to go higher. Yes, it's another country where a lot of people play, but obviously to get to this standard, it takes uh, many years hard work and practice and improvement. Kurt Mathlin, born in London, but has been living in Norway for around about a decade now. Twenty-eight. Uh, 
Well, he feared the worst when he sat down, and he'll certainly be fearing the worst in the seat. Yeah, that shot he played was never going to be easy. Kurt okay, might just take this red on to the green pocket here. If it's dead straight, he can get back for the black. Well, the feels have got a slight kick there. It's just taken a little bit of pace out of the cue ball. Nice pop. We've had a few kicks, haven't we, over the course of the last couple of days? Well played. Chatting to Peter Ebden at the awards dinner back in May, uh, David, and he was saying about the, the balls of manufacturers today. He felt they were just a little bit too light, and they've got a, an extra polish on them as well. Finely polished, so you know, perhaps that's not helping. Mm, we seem to be getting a lot of kicks. Well, I know a lot of players feel that they are lighter than they were a couple of years back. Well, Snooker say they're not, but uh, the players, you know, they would know. They're the ones who play the game week in, week out. 51. 52. Well, he's going to need another red after the black to leave Ken Doherty needing snookers. And this is what Mafflin has to do. He knows he can't afford to be dragged into a tactical duel with Ken Doherty with 59. all his years of experience. So got on the attack and it's worked here in this opening frame. Hilda Moons is our referee in the middle of this one for these 75. two lads. They do a great job, come uh, all over Europe to attend these tournaments, these European tour events. They love the game, the snooker, want to be involved with it. Very enthusiastic. 84. Well, we could be starting with a century here. 89. 90. Wow, this is terrific stuff. Great start here from the for the man from Norway. 94. I think we've seen today just how much talent there is in this game, right down the rankings. Cut Mafflin, world number 62, but uh, it's come out here 96. and played a terrific first frame. And this uh, green and brown for a century in the first frame. Can't ask for more than that. 99. He's had two maximums in his career, so he is a heavy scorer, 84 centuries. It's about to go 85. 95. Terrific.
I don't think Kenny will be taking too many more of those on <laughs> if this is the result. 114. Oh, bit of extra side there. Uh, lovely stuff that from Kurt Mafflin. What a great break. 121 clearance. What a big mistake from Ken Doherty. So Mathlin off and running here in Germany. He leads Ken Doherty by one frame to nil, and there's more after the break. So not necessarily a particularly popular result locally, of course, Ken being from Ireland, but the uh, point is it's not just a win, it's a win on television in this sort of environment. Well, Ken's seen it all before in his long and uh, terrific career, world champion, of course, six ranking titles to his name, and a, a great ambassador for the sport as well. An avid Man United fan. Served the trophy at Old Trafford that year when he won it. I think you've got to admire Kurt Mathlin as well, David. Let's not forget they had a, a bad car crash, didn't he, back in 2010. Had to have a metal plate put in his shoulder. And he's just chipped away, worked hard at his game. And he's, it's nice to see him back playing well again. Yeah, well, he had to really remodel his, his technique having had that crash and uh, you know it was worrying time for him he wondered if he'd ever play again so it's terrific to see him doing so well yeah dropped off the main circuit back in 2011 but re-qualified I might just be able to see that red on the left hand side so he's done well to get back here well if you can see this red he might take it on Plenty of room. No, oh, he's been fortunate there. The problem Ken's got now, of course, we look at Kerr's in the chair that he can't take the white down the table, that red near the middle pocket. Might just run into the pack here. Well, if they start tip-tapping in, in the pack, we could finish up having a re-rack. It's the thread that's down the table that's the problem. Not touching. Well, unless Ken can get that cue ball anywhere near the green pocket. Well, he's offered uh, up the opportunity for Kurt to play this red down the table. Just change things around a little. Well, that's no good. He's left this red on. Not a great start for him.
Kurt back in then. And he's nicely on the blue. Just wonder whether you can see the green, actually. That would be better, but I'm not sure. I can't see from here what sort of angle he's got on this blue, whether he can get close to these reds. Green ball. Well, he can see the green. That's OK. I think the, the, there is one there to the right corner. Unless one's blocking the other. Yeah, well, body language says no. Well, there you go. I thought he might just have dropped on the right hand one. They were disappointed with that because there were reds, open reds he could have played on. Quick Mefflin, four. Shows how aggressive he is, though, that he tried to get them open straight away there. So, Ken Doherty on the back foot here. Huh. That's one way of getting the white back to ball. the replay there just caught the red so obviously too thick well that should have been better because the the brown yellow and blue were a big target to get in behind didn't play that one very well and this is the first real chance that Ken Doherty has had. I just wonder, uh, again, as we look at Kurt here, whether Ken could possibly get on the black here with a cannon on another red. Hmm. That also could prove to be very expensive. Not the start the Irishman was looking for. No, he's been so used in his career to controlling matches, controlling the type of match it is, but here, he's been hit with everything by Kurt Mafflin, and it's put him a little on edge, I think. Well. Mafflin's come out, going for everything, made a century first frame, and now he's in again. This is both uh, players their second match today. They'll have another match after this one to qualify for the final stage tomorrow, the last 16. Some big hitters went through yesterday, but not so today. Most of them have gone out. Incredible. This is not easy either. This is uh, not guaranteed. They don't go in if you catch the near knuckle. Ken Doherty still the only player to have won 
the World Professional Championship, the World Amateur Championship and the World Junior Championship. Seven. And he's getting to the stage, of course, where in the near future he could win the World Seniors Championship, el eligible to play from next year. Although Stephen Hendry, he was 44, he's eligible to play, to play this year for some reason. Joe Johnson has drawn him. Joe's delighted about that. Fifteen. Apparently the rule uh, is that if you turn 45 during the season, which Stephen does, you can get in. So that's why he's in. He was in the, the very small print. The very, very, very small print. Just got larger. Twenty-eight. Never done that one slightly, but he has the blue to the corner. This is a good chance here for Ken Doherty. That wonderful century from Curtin, the opening frame. He's had a couple of chances in this one, but Ken really needs to make this count. Get some table time, if you can. Find some rhythm. I know they've had a match already, but in these best of sevens, we keep saying it, the sprints, no intervals. All of a sudden, you can find yourself 2-0 behind in no time at all and, and in trouble. And there is the table time at the moment, 66% to Kurt, 33 to Ken. Just wonder where the other one percent's gone. Was it 34? I'm sure it was. gets tougher now from here I'm not sure whether the red there's the black will pass the other two into this corner this is a difficult positional shot he's checking that now it looks pretty tight uh, let's see how he plays this he might just be playing on that red from this yellow well you must think it goes but there can't be much room and he could have done with getting a little bit closer to this red well, if it is tight from there, he should play the safety, really. He's got a good lead in this second frame. Gone for the double. Ken Doherty, 43. Well, if he has left this red on, it's a poor shot. Well, there you go. One. Much easier from there, of course, and then where Ken was off the uh, or near to the side cushion. But that's a poor shot, really, from Ken Doherty to leave that red on. And if you can screw into these two reds, these two reds. Wow! I wonder if they were planned. I wonder if Ken's missed it. He's gone to split them. That was a great effort. He's been a little bit unlucky there. Eight.
Well, it was never going to be easy down the cushion. But that was a little bit all or nothing. Now he's given Ken another great chance here to make the score level. One. Well, most of the match seems to have been all or nothing for both of them. It seems to be they've got to go in, otherwise you're going to leave something on. It's Ken Nockerty's hoping to benefit here. So the Brown put in 30 in front. So red in a big colour, and it's snooker needed. Well, after the first frame, I'm sure he's delighted to get two or three bites at the cherry in this one. Yes, and he doesn't mind scrapping it out. He won a match last week in the uh, qualifying for the Indian Open. He beat uh, Luca Brussel 4 2. His highest break in the match was 25, but he still won. 12. Where has he gone there? He needed the pink or the black. Well, he can take the brown, but Kurt can still tie. Well, blue would be enough, actually. I thought the pink and black, blue would be enough. He's got the angle on the yellow to get on to this last red, so he does get position here, it doesn't really matter. Looks a great shot. Could have done with that rolling a little bit further. He's just put himself under a little bit of, of unnecessary pressure here. If uh, the, the other red that he potted, he only needed to land on the pink. Yes, and if he misses this, he's probably going to leave it in the jaws. And then they're all on. Played. It's about to go one apiece. Crafty Ken, they call him. <laughs> when he won the World Championship, beat Stephen Hendry in the final. Hendry had five centuries and outpointed Ken on the aggregate, but Ken won 18 12. He won all the close frames. 17. He's always been very good. 19. Under pressure. And he's Kurt done enough, Mufflin surely, here. And the yes, Kurt Mafflin stays in his seat, so... Well, he's hit with all sorts in the first frame. That century, 121 from Mafflin, but Ken Doherty in bits and pieces has won the second. So this match, all square, at one apiece. Well, he was always going to take it on. We saw that from the way he approached the first two frames, but it didn't go in.
16. Let's not forget earlier in the day when Ding Junhui had a good start in the opener, then just let that one slip a little bit. He allowed Dave Gilbert back into the match. Dave Gilbert played very well towards uh, the end of that match. He deserved the win. Ken happy to have levelled, of course. 17. You can think about things ahead. Two or three years ago, yes, you would have said Ken is a strong favourite, but I think these two today, I think they're well balanced. It's difficult to really to put a, a favourite between these two. Ken, Ken, of course, has got the more experience, but Ken Mufflin, a very dangerous player, as we've seen already. 23. Well, Doherty came here 75th on the order of merit, so he needs uh, clearly plenty of points. This is the fourth event of eight, 29. and you've got to get in the top 24 following the eighth event to qualify for the grand finals. 30. But it's all done on money one, so if you do go a long way, you rocket up the list. Great shot. He's managed to just disturb a couple. Yeah, it's okay, it's not landed perfect, but he still has this red to the centre. I think he has the other one to the corner as well. I think he was hoping that uh, one or two more might have come out there. But at least he's got a pot on. Thirty-six. All of a sudden, he looks a different player. Well, he's got both sides of the game. That's why he's been so successful. He can scrap it out when he has to. He can score heavily when he has to. 307 career centuries will tell you that. Yes, there was pressure on that. I think he thought the white pinged off the side cushion, which is why he lost ideal position. But whatever, he's missed that. Great shot. Very aggressive. Eight. Ah, needed the spider and he's missed it. Yes, he was digging down on the white and uh, missed the red. I think he's covered it with the black, but there is one that goes to the green bag. He 
knew that was in and immediately he struck it. Bang on line. Five. Just has to control the white here, really. He's bound to land on a colour because the blue, uh, the blue is over the well near the middle pocket. I think he's looking at a cannon on the the right hand red of the bunch. He's thinking that I might even land on the pink here. He'll be definitely on the blue. He's playing it with a touch of side. That was the cannon. Well, that's unlucky. He's just left it a little bit awkward. Landing on the pink would have been the bonus. But I think this red will pass the yellow. So all he has to do is just drop this in, but... queuing over this red. It's tricky. Couldn't do much with it. And I think now I bet he wishes that when he potted that red that he played a slightly different shot. You can see the idea, but he couldn't do much with that from that angle. Doherty, 11. Well, that was a good chance missed there. He'll be annoyed with himself. It's such a fine line, David, isn't it? When you get those sort of chances, you have to try and nail the frames. Otherwise, the, the, this game can come back to haunt you, really. You have to have so much self-discipline. Yes, and the other side as well is when things do go wrong, it's how you react to it. Ken Doherty has got a lot of experience. He's been in this position many times before, so that's on his side. Some younger players, of course, have that to learn. But he's annoyed because he knows these have should, should have been his. Yes, and he was starting to play well. He'd won the second frame and he was starting to look good. Now it's out of his hands. And uh, this is a great chance, you've got to say, for Mathlin to take the lead again. 15. Interesting match already, this, and I think it's proof that, you know, not every match has to be star names against star names. It's the what happens on the table that's interesting. I think that's going to happen more and more in the coming years. Everything's much more open now. It's a flat draw as well. And there's some great players around, and uh, it's nice to see them being put on the match tables. Sometimes they're being tucked away at the back, you never see them, but they're being given their opportunities. Yes, I think that's one of the best things about the, the new era, if you like. It's the fact we now get to see so many players. We've seen today, Kieran Wilson has come along and beaten Sean Murphy. Dave Gilbert this morning against Ding. So it's good to see some new faces, or newer faces. Could there be another star going out here? 30. Well, increasingly, reputations don't count for much. Well, 
Well, he's just overdone that slightly. 38. Just stretching a little here for a right hand up. Only three points behind now, but not a difficult ball on the table. It's under hit that. It's not worked out too badly actually. He played on the blue to the middle, but he's got an angle here, I think, just to stun over for the yellow into the same green pocket. Didn't play it that way, but he'll take it. Well, he needs up to including the blue here. And Ken Doherty, sitting in his chair, knows, again, that these should have been his. Hang on. He's played a poor one. 46. He might have just got there. Hmm, he'll be thinking, might have a chance here. I think the pot on the green is on. It's a question whether he can get onto the brown. He's going to have to send the cue ball around the table and anything can happen. Well, he chose to drop it in with check side. What a great shot that was. A ton of left-hand side on the cue ball. I can't tell you how good a shot that was, especially on these fine cloths. Excellent. Well, he's not quite had the cue ball under control at the end of this break, but he's still there, and this is frame ball now. Don't expect him to miss this. Well, Ken Doherty will be sitting there thinking, I should be leading 2 1. Well, it was a great green, terrific recovery. Well, the next frame is going to be massive for the Irishman. Terrific clearance from Kurt Mafflin. The frame was in the balance, but he's dished up with 71. Terrific green to Brown. And he's back in front. Interesting match this. Kurt Mafflin leads Ken Doherty 2-1. Well, can can put things right in this one. Good break of shot from Kurt there. He's got to avoid the red on the right hand side here. Safety. That could be unlucky. Well you don't need that. Foul. That time it wasn't the look of the Irish. Well, you can't legislate for that, really. And, of course, ball in hand. And if Kirk can knock this in, he's on the black. He could be away. Oh, came right across that. That was poor queuing. Well, he's, he's got a chance Obviously he doesn't want to be 3-1 behind That's a long way back from there Two all, it's game on once more Well, of course, he's made a career out of great escapes And none Six. better than against the man This tournament he's named after Paul Hunter at the Crucible 2003, the semi finals, where Paul led 15 9 and Ken won 17 16, one of the best matches that that great venue's ever seen, and uh, made more sp special by the sporting way it was played by both of them. There were uh, warm words from Paul afterwards in the dressing room, wishing Ken luck for the final. Oh. 
12. Thirteen. Twenty. I think he got a slight kick there. It's just taking a little bit of pace off the cue ball. I think he could just clip off one of the other reds. Again, and that was a kick. Twenty-one. Well, just look where he's finished. That was a horrendous. We've seen a lot, it's got to be said here, over the last two days. Kandahoti, 21. And as I said earlier, it's a, it's a tough enough game snooker at the best of times, but uh, when things go wrong that aren't your fault, it's really frustrating. <laughs> In behind the green, I think, off the brown. I say that the look tends to balance itself out in the end, but well, I'm not so sure sometimes. Well, it's less likely, I think, in a short match to do that. Could have found the gap. <laughs> Amazing. If you wanted to play that, you couldn't do it. Well, it looks about right. Well played. Whether Ken's contemplating cutting this one back in. Too thin. So was that from there. Does the pink go back onto its own spot or onto the black spot? I'll refer you Hilda Moons. Just checking the pink spot here. Well, there's your answer onto the black spot. Seven. Which has helped things a little. Hmm. Could not have been seven. 
Well, obviously, look, trying to leave an angle on the pink to split the reds, but he's also left one for Ken into the right centre. That was a good chance. One. Perfect angle on the pink. These should split nicely. Oh, but you must get the colour. A little bit careless. The cardinal sin there, missing the pot, splitting the reds. It's given Maplin another chance. One. Well, that's not great either. He had a touch of check side on the white there that's uh, just taking it straight down the table. He was hoping to be on the blue. He could have even, even been on the black. And there's still a pot on this blue. It's not easy. gone for the mini but so that tells you that he's taking this blue on great shot Not sure about the positional side as you watch the replay it's bang in the middle if this red doesn't pass the black here well, he's trying to cut it back into the right corner. Ooh, that sounded heavy as well. Kurt Mefflin, six. Well, this match started well with that century from Kurt Mafflin, but it's just gone off the boil a little bit. Both players are struggling a little bit here. Well, again, it's one of those. He's got this red into the yellow pocket, but he knows he'll leave things on, so he's just going to play a good safety. Just wait. He's still very much in this match, especially if he can level things up at two apiece.
Oh, that one's a possible that he's looking at to this right corner. Well done. Well, it's not great position. He's got the yellow into this corner pocket. He can run through for reds. Well, elected to play the snooker. Looking to drop on this red on the top cushion. It's a good angle. Has he got the pace? Well played. Well judged. That's probably about the best he could do there, really. If he turns it over or pushes it on into a potable position, it could have been a disaster, but he's played that quite well. OK, there's a red on to the corner pocket, but it's tough. They both know this is an important frame. It's 2-2 two -two or it's 3-1 to Kurt Mafflin. So particularly important for Ken Doherty. Tough pot this. miles away. Hang on, though. Hang on. Well, he was a little fortunate to cover it, but I think he's left the plant on. I think I even I'd fancy this one, Dave. Lost the cue ball, played on the black, but he'll take the yellow. Three. Well, it's like I mentioned in that match he, he won against Luca Brassell last week with the ice break at 25. You know, you can scrap these out. And you might sort of forget the frames in terms of how they went, but you know what the score is, and it could be 2-2 two -two in a minute. And he'll take that for sure. Well, it could have been worse, especially if he just totally landed on that red. He's still got a shot on here to get himself onto the black. Leads by 29. Well played. Just black and red needed to make it two apiece, or at least leave Kurt needing snookers. Mm, looks like it's game on. 19. 20. Yes, it's been uh, a tough frame, this, but Ken Doherty won't care about that now.
28. Well, it's the best of three now. In some ways, you've got to probably put Ken's slight favourite now. Thirty-five. Well, it's always good to see him on the TV. When he dropped out the top 16 a few years ago, people were stopping him in the street, 14. asking him if he'd retired because he was in the qualifiers and they hadn't seen him for a while. But uh, he's still going strong and as determined as ever. He's missed that, but it doesn't matter. The frame is over. The frame has gone to the Irishman. This is turning into a real battle, and we know he won't let go. He's got himself to 2 2, so a possible three frames remain, all square here, and we'll be back very shortly for frame five. Ken Nocty looking very determined there as he sat in his chair. He's got himself level 2-2 two -two here. The break-off shot could have been better. And he's left uh, a chance on here with this red to the right corner pocket. He'll be happy it's 2-2 two -two though, he's back in this. Well, he hasn't got away with it this time. He's left that red on. I just wonder whether Ken Doherty can just sort of screw across the blue here, try and get down towards the black. If he plays his playing ball, he'd be going into the pack of reds. It's not easy to get the action on the cue ball as well from where he is. Well, it's playing ball, so this will have to go in. He's definitely colliding into things. Oh, well, there you go. He's found the gap. That's even better. a nice shot. At some Five. stage you'd like to get on that red near the black spot just to clear things at this end. You might actually come back for the blue here. Six. Well again it was a slightly heavy contact, took the pace out of the white and he's finished the wrong side of the blue. He can drop it in for that red in the middle of the table. Well, perfect line for the blue into the corner, and this time he will be trying to get onto that red near the black spot. And all of a sudden, within a couple of shots here, things could open up. Well played. 17.
played that well. <clears throat> Took the more difficult brown because it was the better angle to get onto this red. Well, I think he's going to play the cannon, knowing that that loose red will be available if he gets the, the right contact. Could get one or two more open here. Well, he's played the calculated cannon, that's fine. He has nudged out one or two. 30. It's a bit of a stretch. Ah. Can Doherty 30? You've got to be careful at his age. He was unlucky there because when he did play the cannon, the cue ball just went a little bit further to the left than intended. And uh, it, it was a stretch. One. Hope he hasn't pulled a muscle. Fourteen. Fifteen. Well, that's finished perfect. He's loosened them, but he's got the second opportunity here to really open them up. Well, that's OK. He has one to this right corner. Twenty. OK, could have landed better, but there's still a pot on. That's good. 21. Only just. Well, just as well that this pink goes into the centre as you watch the replay. <laughs> it was definitely the corner of the pocket, of course, but... If the pink didn't go, it would have been a, a difficult black to take on, although I think he would have probably looked at the blue. Oh, no, no. Kurt Mefflin, 21. Done all the hard work. I think there's no doubt this match has got a little nervy now, and it's understandable it's close, getting towards the business end. So... Uh, the baton passes to Ken Doherty. One. And it has to be said, this is the sort of match where he's so often thrived, where it has been nervy and close and there's been a lot of pressure. Eight. Nine. 
Well, the winner of this match would play the winner of Alfie Baden and Dave Gilbert. Of course, Dave Gilbert was the player that put out Ding Jun Wee earlier today. Seventeen. Getting closer. Black would put him uh, 33 in front, 51 on, so a couple more reds required as well. Well, it's one more red required. Left this a little awkward, can't get his hand on the bed of the table. And he's missed it. It was never ideal on that. So Mafflin is 39 behind, as you see, possible 43 on. Real tense encounter, this. Oh dear, that's calamitous. That is calamitous. How unlucky to knock the blue in. Oh dear. And now, of course, uh, he needs, well, he needs three snoopers. He's 44 behind. With just 35 on. One shot there. And he snookered as well. Yeah, Ken just apologised. Well, he may well concede the frame. I think he has done. Well, I think he's given Ken the option to play on because, of course, it's his prerogative. <laughs> well, he's staying where he is. Why wouldn't you? He's won the frame, a tense frame, a nervy frame, but it's Ken Doherty who's smiling because he has got himself in front. He needs one more frame for victory. He leads Kurt Mafflin 3-2. And you're put two, and the question is how many frames are we going to have now because uh, Doherty's got himself in front for the first time at 3-2.
short of pace. He's offered up a chance here for the Irishman. Nice pop, just lost the cue ball a little there. And now the black is on, but it's a toughie. He was trying to slow that white down. Great red. Well, he's got the upper hand here, but will he take the black on? It's one of those, he could put himself into a very good position. Never easy, these division is going away from the pocket slightly. Can Doherty one? Well, now he wishes he played the safety. One. Kurt Mafflin's made the two highest breaks of the match, 121 and 71. He'd like another big break here, just to resettle himself, I think. After a couple of edgy frames, gone the other way. Oh dear! They certainly didn't want that. Well, it wasn't straight. He made it straight though. Well, as I say, viewers on the continent, you're going to have to retune to Eurosport 2, where coverage will continue in a few minutes, and it will also continue in a few minutes on British Eurosport 2. And this is the position. It's 3-2 to Doherty. He leads nine points to one here in frame six. Of course, it's first to four to reach the last 32. And it's uh, got a little tense in the last half an hour or so. Yes, Ken was in there, and he just missed a, a difficult black to the left middle. And that's an excellent red from Kurt Maffin. Now then, obviously the big question is, who would be going into a decider? It's been a reasonable match, actually, David. You say it has got uh, edgy, but it's been uh, that's, uh, sort of added to the drama here. Kurt kicked off for that century in the opening frame. Ken did well to get back into it, two apiece. Eight. And leads 3-2. Will we need Nine. all seven? Yes, matches don't always have to be of the highest quality to be entertaining. It's the uh, it's the unexpected. You know, we've seen some matches. Ronnie O'Sullivan beat uh, the young lad from Qatar four 0 and you just you knew from pretty much the first couple of shots that's what what the score was going to be. But no idea how this is going to pan out. Kurt Mathlin hopes it'll be a decider. Just left himself a little bit awkward on this red, but 14. if it's dead straight, he should be okay. Could still chip the one into the middle. Fifteen. Well, if it does go three all, difficult to pick a winner, really.
Lots of inverse side there on the cue ball. Just need a little bit more. 22. Pace wise. Chance There's been a lot of the top stars tumbling today. John Higgins is gone, Steve Maguire, Ding Junhui, Neil Robertson. One. Ken Doherty, not looking to be one of those. No, he's got a perfect angle on the blue just to split these five reds. Not quite at the top flight anymore, David, but he, he can still play a decent game, can't he? Yes, and uh, he has that experience and he has the reputation. He's got the titles to back it up. And everyone knows, Kurt Mafflin among them, that uh, he's tough to beat. He doesn't have to play at his very best to win. He can find ways of winning playing below par. Seven. <laughs> This is a great chance to win frame and match. I think the black will go on to the pink spot. Fourteen. Well, this is looking like a good chance now to win the match. Yeah, noticeable that the tempo around the table has just slowed slightly as well. He's going to try and make the most of this, and so he should. Twenty. Let's not forget, I mean, Ken was at the top echelons of the game, of course, but... He knows that this would be a good win for him. Kurt Mufflin is a tricky opponent. Yes, he won their only previous meeting, did Mufflin, in Ireland, the PDC finals last season, 4-2. Took a little while to find his feet here, Ken, in this match, but 24. he's played, uh, he's got stronger as the match has gone on. 25. Tons of experience, of course. 22. Well, just needs to keep going for a few more balls here. He's got himself into an 18 22. point lead. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Blue puts him 30 in front. So red and blue, pink or black. Kurt Mathlin would need a snooker on the last red. Forty-four. He started so well, he made a century in the first frame. Really classy break. But uh, he's missed a few you would admit since then it got a little edgy, a little tense, and that's the sort of environment where Ken Doherty so often <coughs> has uh, performed so well. The black to lead by 38 with 35 on.
but as long as that red's on the table, Kurt Mathlin is not out of this. Once this in, if it's in, the match is over. Oh, it was so close. 52. It was so close to dropping. So 52 break. Kurt Mathlin needs one snooker. Tell the last match of the day will be Ricky Walden against Michael Holt, which will be 15 minutes after this match. Ken Doherty's hoping that will be in about 15 minutes from now, but the red is still not in. Well, it's going to have to be a good snooker against Ken Doherty, who uh, is so experienced in the tactical play. He's got to really get him in trouble. So it's a good shot, needing to keep the red on really at this stage, if possible free ball, although it needs the one snooker. I think Ken might be able to just get between brown and green here and bounce the white off the cushion, just create the angle. I don't think it's a natural angle. This is a, a little bit awkward. That was a great shot there from Kurt. Yes, he's bouncing this into the cushion. Good hit. Well, he's got the angle to get on the black here. I wonder, he might just take red and black here and just look where the book colours are. In good position for snookers. It goes without saying, whatever happens, he's got to pot this. Well, it kind of gets interesting now. He's uh, still got half a chance here. Yeah, that's, that's a good shot as well. He's finished top side of the yellow, so he can possibly try and get a little stun shot in behind the brown or the green. And if you just weld that cue ball to one of those colours. No, is he coming down this end with the white? Eight. Well, that's not great. He's given Ken the chance to kill off frame and match. I thought he might have gone the other way. One snooker still required for Ken Mufflin. Yeah, there's just a bit of anxiety on behalf of Ken Doherty. He's sort of got one foot in the next round, but he's not there yet. And he knows, as I said, one good snooker, and it could all turn around. <laughs> a 
both looking to see if there's an edge there. Not much sticking out, I don't think. Imagine if he went in off in the corner pocket. Be a good billiard shot, but it'd be no good to him. I think there is something. Yeah, it wasn't far away, was he? <laughs> good hit, though. <laughs> He's relieved. So Kurt Mathlin still needs one snooker on the colours. Stranger things have happened at this game of snooker. Oh, that's too thin. Point over here from Kurt. He's got the snooker. Well, we all thought this was over about five minutes ago, but you never know. We might be going into a decider. He's got to hit this off two cushions. Well, Judge had a touch of side on the cue ball. Good hit. too heavy. Well, I think we might see he can have a go at this one. One good pot, and he should be in the next round. He won't care about position on the green, just knock this yellow in. Well played. Again, I think Max is relieved. <laughs> yeah, that's the emotion, I'm sure. What a cracking pot that was. It was. Not the green in to really make sure, then there might be the handshake. Well, okay, yeah, we'll come back. Two. Yep, 32 and it's a two snookers required. A resilient performance from the Irishman, though. Well, I could see the idea, but at least he's got the green safe. Well, Ken just has to keep his discipline here. He knows in his own mind that really he's into the next round. Well, that doesn't help uh, Kurt Mafflin's cause. To say the least, a scratch of the head. Well, mm. <laughs> never easy off one cushion. I wonder if he misses this, there might be a handshake. Five. Yeah. Well, form comes and goes, but. Ken Doherty is still up for the fight and he proved that again here today. A terrific performance from him. He wasn't necessarily at his very best, but my word, he worked for it and he got the result in the end. Kurt Mathlin started with a century. 121, he made a 71 as well, but Doherty, as he so often has done down the years, plugged away, plugged away and plugged away some more. And he is through to the last 32. He's beaten Kurt Mathlin by four frames to two.